Hey everyone, I'm Prez, and welcome back to the Netherlands. In, in this series, we're building a beautiful Dutch city inspired by Groningen, and hopefully you're excited to follow along. This episode, we're building the area surrounding the biggest church in the city, which is going to be a really big landmark because it's the tallest any building can get in the city, so let's get straight into it. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you're doing well. Sorry for the wait for the video. It's been two weeks, but uh, that's probably what you can expect for at least the, the near future, just considering I'm getting settled in and I have a lot more obligations than normal, etc. So I, I'm just happy to get a video out here and I'm happy with how this video turned out. I'm This build was really important because at least in the Netherlands, uh, obviously it's different um, per city. Uh, but from, from my understanding, just generally in the Netherlands, the, the tallest building in an old city center is going to be the the big church, right? And in Groningen, that church is the uh, Martini Tor, uh, which I probably mispronounced. But uh, regardless, that, that church is sort of to the um, east end of the city core. Um, actually pretty close to the canals, and it's actually in a different spot. There is a corresponding church in Groningen that, next to the Wismarkt, uh, which we're, I mean, we're sort of working in that spot, sort of to the west end. Um, although uh, the coordinates, like our west and east, are going to be different um, from Groningen's. Um, I, it, it's not like Columbia City, where I just have the same sort of north-south um, idea that Seattle has. It, it's it's a decent amount different, so definitely bear with me. Um, we'll sort of determine exactly what that means uh, in the future. Maybe I'll end up just sort of deciding to go with the same sort of north, south, east, west uh, that corresponds to Kroningen, but we're definitely not going to be building a city that's exactly like Kroningen. It's just the general layout. Um, I think of Groningen is really good for just showing what a Dutch city is made of um, and like all of the different aspects that, you know, promoting walkability, promoting cycling, promoting etc. Um, I think as we discussed in the interview last episode um, with Willem, it, it's I think Groningen is a really good city to sort of exhibit all of those and allow us to sort of study them a little bit, have fun with them. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't watched the last episode, I definitely recommend it. We actually had a Groningen resident on, Willem, uh, who actually uh, explains a lot of the different um, you know, things you might need to know about the city. So go to the top right hand corner of the screen right now and check that out if you want, or you can just wait until the end of the video um, and do it then uh, if you want to keep watching. But I definitely recommend you check it out. It was a really good interview, and I 100% plan on doing more interviews in the future uh, with relevant people, whether they be planners or just residents of Groningen, um, who would be able to bring something to the table. So, I mean, if you're somebody like that and you might be interested in coming on, you can let me know. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, send me an email, by the way, because like, I will definitely respond to an email. Uh, I can't respond to every comment at this point just because I'm so busy, but I do read them all. So um, any feedback in the comments, by the way, for anything I build in this episode, highly appreciated. As usual, I will read it and it is always welcome because I, a lot of the time, don't really know what I'm doing. I probably mispronounced some stuff already, you know, maybe helping me fix that so I don't do it again, things like that. And I'm slowly getting my, my Dutch pronunciation just a little bit better day by day. But yeah, oh yeah, these event tents that I'm placing, these are really cool. They, they just came out of the workshop pretty recently. And I think I'm gonna use these to replace the ones in the central market square because we replaced those last episode with some really old Lost Gecko ones, which Lost Gecko commented saying well, they, they were horrible, like, you know, use the new ones, um, which I mean, I mean, I like the tents. It's just they're really bright and they sort of contrast with the rest of the city. So I think these would be better. Um, but those, the Lost Gecko ones would be like, really good still like in terms of their scale and everything just as long as they like had you know slightly less bright textures just compared to the really old and rustic feel of the the city core but yeah i mean I, i'm definitely looking forward to um 
moving forward th with this city. There's actually a tool. I, I actually forget who sent me this. I believe it was a, a planner I was talking to. Uh, it's a website that actually lets you see which buildings were placed, uh, or not placed, but like built at which time in, in history, what year um, in the Netherlands. And it's super cool. And it's uh, an extra, um, an extra sort of layer on top of the a map that sort of shows just generally a map over time of the Netherlands, which is also a really cool tool that I used in the last episode to demonstrate some stuff. So those two are going to be really useful to me. Um, I'm mostly going to start using, as I expand the rest of the city core, I'm going to use that tool showing me exactly where different things are that were built at different times, just to see um, what kind of development I should be placing. And it looks like... Uh, I'm generally on the right track, but I want to make sure that I get the right pockets of modern development in, in the right sort of places that make sense, and that'll be useful, but mostly those will be really, really useful once we move out into the more suburban areas of the city. I mean, I say suburban, but, you know, like, just less dense, um, and I guess you can call them suburbs, but they're, like, I, from, from an American lens, they're, they're, they're not suburbs. Uh, the suburbs here are actually bad. The, the, those are good. And, you know, they come from different decades, it's not just all one thing, not all of the post-war buildings in the city were built at the same time, they all had all these different planning styles, and I really hope to, maybe in some interviews, um, learn some more about that myself, and hopefully teach you guys some stuff that I don't even know. Uh, about how Dutch cities have expanded throughout history because it's a really really interesting process and I'm Really happy that I have the opportunity to capture it here in this city And I think those websites will also be really useful Yeah, if you have a name for the church that you think would suit the city, well, definitely let me know. It would be great if we could get some interesting names that might have some uh, historical context to the city. Um, that would be that'd be realistic. So put your name in the comments. I'll take a look and I'll, I'll try to choose a name there. I mean, so far the only name that I've taken from the comments is just the Hordmarkt, uh, which is the market to the right there. But uh, that was just the most obvious name to choose there. And after everybody commented it, it became even more obvious. So um, yeah, hopefully we can get a nice, you know, unique and interesting name for this church though. Uh, anyway, we are working on sort of the road layout around here. Um, I'm trying to stick to the same sort of road layout that there there is in Groningen. There, it's these longer roads that sort of branch out from the city center towards the canals on the um, exterior of the city core where there used to be moats, right? And these roads are decently long, but they'll have little alleys within them um, sort of connecting different sides to make them more walkable and increase the amount of density that's sort of possible because you're able to get more uh, people you know, even crammed in behind the buildings so uh, we'll actually build some canal or not some canals um i mean the canal is going to be like sort of right right on the bottom of the screen right there that's where the canal is going to be like this is the road you're seeing on the bottom of the screen right here that's going to be the road on the city center side of the canal and just because of the way the um canal works that I'm, I'm using the asset uh the, it, the roads will be one way it'll be very good it'll, it'll be a nice ring road system it, just like there is in Hrongen I'm not exactly sure if that system is is one way on each side or not but um yeah it, it's gonna be a really interesting sort of canal system once we actually have it in place and we're definitely gonna do what um uh, Willem said last episode in the interview and build some sort of you know area where you can actually still see the shape of the old moat. Another thing to discuss quickly is building height because I asked about that last episode and what you guys basically said is uh, it, it's totally fine to have taller buildings that are even above four stories as long as they are shorter than the tallest church tower in the city and I mean for us it's the church that is currently unnamed that I placed um, earlier 
and I'm, there's a chance that that won't end up being the tallest church in the city. There's a chance that I'll place a taller one on the other side of this marked um, towards the city hall. We'll see. But for now, that's the tallest one. It's my favorite really, really tall church that I've found so far. We also placed another one sort of to the right uh, there that we'll detail in a little bit by Los Gecko. That is a completely godly church. I, I love it so much. I love both of the churches that I placed this episode. Just amazing architecture. But yeah, um, basically, as long as the buildings are below the height of the um, the church, it's fine. Uh, and it, it's obviously that's a little bit of an exaggeration. You're not going to have just a whole city built with buildings that are just one foot below the height of the tallest uh, church spire. But and just as a general rule, it's, it's like as long as it's below that, then you're totally fine. And um, our church spire here is way taller than all these buildings, so we're good. Uh, it is a little bit taller than, I mean, the, the buildings are a little bit taller than the buildings that you might see in Kronigam, but I'm, I'm totally okay with that because uh, I'm placing them pretty purposefully and I'm making sure to have the right mix of new and old here. And the height's not too high for Dutch cities generally. The main reason I'm not using shorter buildings is just because there are not that many Dutch building assets. So just no way to get around it, especially for the urban core area. There are some amazing ones, like the ones I'm placing, but uh, there aren't many of them and if I just keep placing only those buildings it's just gonna get a little old and those buildings themselves are often taller than the you know aforementioned you know four stories or whatever you might see in Kronigan uh, just generally but yeah I'm just trying to be realistic here I know it may seem kind of stupid but yeah I, I just want to make sure that I'm not totally off track and it seems I'm actually surprised I thought a lot of people were really gonna be against the building hype but apparently it's fine mostly the complaints with buildings were that there were too many German buildings, which makes sense, but I really don't have too many to go off of here, and I'm doing my best. There are some Polish buildings that um, I that look really, really similar to Dutch buildings that I'm definitely going to use as we continue the city core. Honestly, I think the city core is only going to take a couple more episodes. I, I think probably five episodes from now, we're going to be done with it, and we're going to start moving into the first stuff outside of the city, which is not necessarily going to be um, just immediately working on post-war stuff. Like, we, we can't do that yet. I'm trying to generally build chronologically. It's not like I'm going to build chronologically to the point where I build stuff that, that, I, that I then destroy, but I'm still trying to build in a generally chr chronological order so we can just get a general feel for the way the city's been laid out over time, even if the architecture has changed uh, in a lot of places. But generally, a lot of this architecture is very original architecture for what was here. Um, especially for like a fortress city like that. Not much has changed. Uh, I mean, a lot has changed, but not much at the same time. And in terms of the main details I'm adding, like I'm adding, I'm trying to fix these um, sort of elevation problems between the pathways and the uh, the roads down here. Um, the, and the that road that's sort of brown to the top area over there that, that that's gonna be pedestrian only like this road we're looking at there pedestrian only i'm gonna play some bollards there it'll be it'll be good and i'm probably gonna change the road on the other side of the city so it's a little bit uh, more interesting like this one as well i really like this um this road asset but yeah i'm trying to just add some basic details i'm not going overboard here because I, I have to build a big city i can't spend too much time on small details like this but i am placing some tables some umbrellas and placing some just street signs to indicate that there's maybe a restaurant on the first floor of these buildings which are definitely mixed use um, but yeah just tiny details like this really do add a lot to to the city <laughs> Another thing I wanted to sort of discuss before we get back in game here, because we don't have too much time left, uh, is the, uh, the the other series that, that I have in this channel, Columbia City. I'm wondering what you're all thinking of um, what I should do in terms of upload schedule for Columbia City. And I, I know this is a Netherlands video, and I'm going to get a little bit of a more biased audience here, like deciding between the two. but. Uh, I don't really want to upload the Netherlands just once per month, uh, if that makes sense. I, I don't want to just upload this series once a month because we're really just getting started here and I want to make sure that um, it gets a nice, just like, I, I have motivation to build it. I don't want it to to uh, falter in that regard. I definitely don't want Columbia City to just die though. I, I love that series. <laughs> I really don't want it to go anywhere. 
Just let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, maybe I'll just do whatever I feel like building. And honestly, I've just been feel feeling like building the Netherlands uh, for a while. But maybe that'll change. Maybe I'll want to make a Columbia City episode for a week. And yeah, I mean, I I'd say the production time is about the same with both. I spend more time on research for the Netherlands. Uh, and I spend more time on video editing for Columbia City. Because with the Netherlands, I'm sort of using my older video style where I didn't really have you know the overview at the end with the fancy cinematics and this you know ground level views like because we actually have live gameplay in this series because my frame rate's still good it's not gonna last forever but for now at least i'm gonna keep the live gameplay because you guys seem to enjoy it uh but definitely in the future you can expect the live gameplay to go away because my frame rate's going to get worse but once it does we're gonna have the same sort of style of really high production quality that um, we have with uh, Columbia City. So yeah, anyway, hopefully you are, um, I mean, hopefully you have enjoyed the time lapse. The time lapse is over. It's time to, to hop in game, take a look at what we just built, and give you guys a little tour because the city's really expanding. All right, everyone, we're in game. Let's take a quick look at what we accomplished in this episode. It's actually a lot more than you might think. Um, so this is the city. We actually, we only built one, two, three, four, five, I guess six blocks, but it really was a lot of progress and we have a couple of unique fe features in here that I want to show you. So first of all, we have this church, which is not the perfect church for the location. Like it doesn't have perfect, perfect, you know, architecture for what I would want in a in Northern Dutch city, but it, it is way close enough. It is a beautiful, beautiful asset and the texture quality is going to be um, exactly what I need here. Like I could go down on ground level and it doesn't look like the qualities too degraded so that is excellent and we've got this little park over here which is going to be the only park within the city core and it's actually getting a lot of use already which is nice to see people just walking around enjoying their day um i've got some blocks over here different blocks have different sort of styles this one's actually got some you know, shorter buildings actually and you'll see a lot more of these types of buildings as we expand out of the city core um maybe i should fix that i'll fix that uh i gotta remove the parking on this road i'll do that when i get a chance but anyway um you got some trucks parked out back here i think that's the like a finnish mail truck but uh it's a nice asset so i downloaded it and then we got some bikes i made sure to place bikes everywhere yeah, I mean, it's a really cool area here, and one thing to note is definitely the alleys. This is sort of what they look like. Um, I can't really do much about... Actually, I might be able to add a node here, or, or a segment here, so that car... Well, cars wouldn't go there, but make it more realistic so it's not just a curb. I'll figure that out. Um, we have this Darf asset here, which actually looks super cool, even though it's not really intended for... You know, use like this. I really like it. It's a university asset. But yeah, this, the little alleyways here are nice and narrow, exactly what you guys have been requesting. I might try to implement some on the other side of the city core in the future, but for now, we're just going to keep that as is. Um, yeah, this, this is the vibe over here. We have this actually really, like, it doesn't look as big from above, but it's a huge church uh, by Los Gecko, and it is a glorious, glorious piece of work. Like, I mean, can you... Look, Look, look at it. Beautiful church. Gotta love that. Um, texture quality is insane. Model's amazing. I am very pleased with that right there. Uh, we're gonna have a couple other churches in the city core as well. Just some more buildings over here mostly. And yeah, nothing else really. Uh, I mean, we've got this other building over here which is definitely gonna serve as a landmark for the city. It's got some, like, glass looking through, which is kind of cool. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll fix the, the car thing there when I get a chance. But, anyway, that is that is the, the city so far. We have a, a light rail, or tram line, sorry, going through, not the city core itself, but it's from the exterior of the city core. What I'm planning on is, uh, so this is going to be, like, a canal right here. And it's probably going to loop around something like that. So the line will go up this way. And then also extend out over here. Or something like that. Um, sort of going off what um, fail the, the, the failed um, 
light rail system or tram system, sorry, that was never uh, implemented in Kronigan. Um I definitely want to have trams in this city. So even if it you know never got implemented in Kronigan, I definitely want to implement it here. And another thing I, I'm going to try to do is have a second tram line. I'm not exactly sure where that's going to go. Uh, one thing I'm thinking of is having it go through the like the core itself through here, but I'm not exactly sure about that. I think something more like having it sort of hug the ring road. Um, like, because uh, a lot of the time there were, there were canals that are like filled in, um, even separate from the main canal for, for a city. And what I could do is have a, you know, another ring road outside of even this canal right here, um, which serves as a ring road and have that have a, a tram line on it. Uh, I think that would work pretty well. And I'd be able to sort of cut into the city core and get near city hall and then come out on the other end. Um, but I, I don't like, I want the, and then the lines would obviously intersect probably, you know, outside of the city core itself, but maybe they intersect at a, a different important point. Like um, for example, like the, the intersection of them could actually be at the central station. Like this actually like somewhere around here might be a really, really good place for a central station for the city and the two lines intersecting there would be um actually pretty cool something like that basically i'm thinking of two tram lines one of which sort of loops around right here right now and will sort of touch the city center with a stop probably right here and uh, other than that it doesn't really go any further into the city center but that's really uh totally fine i mean you could walk a block you're fine like i uh, just want to make sure that there is light rail service and we're also going to have a system where uh, people can park on the exterior of the city center if they do have cars and then take a bus inside um we're definitely going to have that as well just very simple bus lines that don't even go very far um that allow people to uh, park and go to the hardmarkt or something like that yeah it, it'll be cool i'm really loving how the city's coming along i know it doesn't look like much but in the grand scheme of things that is a pretty decent size for four episodes and we've got i mean we've got this area to, to build over here and I, I mean i think th there's a chance that this won't end up being a canal road like there's a chance that i'm gonna have to go out one more block here to make it a little the shape a little bit more reasonable um but we'll definitely see i have to figure out what shape sort of works here i don't want it to be too oval like generally has to be a circle but not not too close we'll see but yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. You know what to do. Highly appreciated. It takes a little effort on your part, but it helps out a ton and helps YouTube know that you know you want to see more videos from me. Uh, so it'll recommend you them. Um, you could also follow me on Twitter. That's in the description. And you could support me on coffee if you want to give me a one-time donation. That'd be highly appreciated. Uh, just buy me a coffee. It'd be great could use some coffee right now got lots of lots of uh work to do lots of reading to do um so coffees are coffees are highly appreciated so you could buy me one over there or you could support me on patreon and get some some perks like for example uh you could get shout outs and videos quick shout out to maxwell hayes emma log joey g ben m and anthony perez thank you all so much for your uh, your support and it's highly highly appreciated and um i mean yeah patrons get access to videos early as well just for a dollar a month you can get access to videos up to a week early depending on when i finish them just whenever i finish them i'll upload them early for patrons uh you could also get your name in the credits teasers um you could get downloads to the save games like if you want to go and fly around in you know, our beautiful little city of feet here you could you could do that as well um if you if you become a patron so yeah lots of perks over there for patrons uh and yeah just your, your call I, I don't care if you become a patron or not uh you could just support me by liking the videos giving me feedback in the comments anything of the sort that's more than appreciated and i really really I'm highly privileged to have the opportunity to build a city online and get feedback for it from, you know, hundreds of people whenever I upload a video and get better at building and, and that stuff. It's just, it's really a privilege that I won't take for granted. So just your support in any way is highly appreciated. 
But yeah, that's basically it. Sorry for uh, you know droning on for so long, but yeah, that's that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed the cinematics, and I'll see you for the next episode of either the Netherlands or or Columbia City. Have a good one. Thank you.